Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out in the heavenly backyard garden and recently I've been adding a lot of equipment to the Celestron 11 inch edge HD telescope and it's sitting on the uh, Celestron CGX mount so I have just about everything working through Celestron. So one of the big uh, uh, items of interest is CPWI, the device software that operates this rig and with all the accessories uh, included on the rig it also incorporates that into its software including the star sense auto guider and the uh, automatic uh, focus motor uh, for the celestron and the uh, power hub that i have on top connecting all these devices and it goes into a mini computer over here and this is then remote access from my upstairs computer where I operate the entire rig during the nighttime hours. One of the things I want to highlight is the polar alignment feature in the CPWI StarSense Auto Guider and also I'm going to look at the guiding as well. And with the hood on top of the uh, scope as a, a dew shield and light shield I'm able to incorporate the HyperStar extender on the uh, system which takes this from an F10 down to an F1.8 uh, and it just it's really really nice I take the hood off here the, uh, the the lid right here there I have the camera inside and this makes it also very easy to take flats and dark flats uh, with this system before you had to rely on shooting the sky because you couldn't cover up uh, the camera for the flats Meanwhile, uh, it works really well to be able to take the flats now with the HyperStar attached. Now, with the HyperStar attached and the StarSense Auto Guider, let's check out the guiding. I did some three minute and five minute exposures on some wide targets, the, uh, the Veil Nebula and also the North America Nebula. So let's go upstairs and take a look. Okay, first things first, let's connect the rig. There it is, USB, we'll connect. And let's do a um, star sense alignment. Okay. Mount is ready. It is homing to the home positions on the switches. This is the Celestron CGX mount. Okay, let's do a calibration of the star sense. Oh, so that's important. Let's do that first. All right, let's go to all sky. Let's pick on uh, this guy here. I think that's Vega. It is. Let's go to Vega. All right, we want that. <clears throat> go into sharp cap. Let's bring this over. That's up. That's over. Okay. That should be up. Up. Okay. That's pretty close right there. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's go back into CPWI. And centered. Okay. Okay. Let's do next. Complete. Okay. It's going to be moving to the east, so I want to move the target over to here. Let's move it up over here in the northeast. So, that should do it right there. So I need to go down and adjust the azimuth. All right, I switched the, um, the azimuth and then the altitude, which are your east and west, and I got these both near zero. So I can look at the other axis there. There it is at the azimuth, just about at zero. Back again to the altitude, just about at zero. So it looks pretty close. All right, so let's say finish. Perform alignment, okay. Star sense alignment, that's what we want. Begin alignment. Is the mount ready to move to the home switches? Yes. OK. 
Okay. All right. Um, we already calibrated the star sense, so we're ready. We already did the polar align, so no. Let's do four points, okay? And it's going to do its thing. This usually takes less than two minutes. Yeah, all done. So you see, it was less than two minutes. All right, exit. Now, let's go to find target. That's what I want. Load tide database. Okay. Well, let's just go to Saturn. Saturn is right in this area here. Well, it's not too far from where the telescope is, so let's see. Go to target. All right, let's go to sharp cap. <laughs> there it is, right on the money, just about. Yeah, you can get a little closer, but not much. Now, remember, I have the hyperstar on, so this is F2. So I'm getting a wide field of view. That's Saturn right there. Um, I think I can, let's see, turn the reticle off. Zoom in a little bit more. Again, remember, this is F2. Yeah, there's that's definitely Saturn. No doubt about it. All right, just did an autofocus, and as you can see, it looks very good. Uh, let's take a look at the actual image itself. There it is right there. Uh, that's the um, Veil Nebula over here. And it looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's just zoom in on this. Yeah, look how round those stars look. This is with the L Enhanced filter. Now, it's not designed for F2, um, but it seems to be working somewhat a lot better than the uh, filter I used the night before. Uh, as you can see, the stars, even on the end, look pretty good this time. Um, I'm very impressed. Um, and this is a three second exposure, so uh, still. All right, let's try some uh, long exposures. 60 seconds. Let's put the guider on. And over here, um, Star Sense Auto Guider, uh, Enable Guiding, or Guiding Enabled, okay. Well, let's just pop up the graph there too. It's going to take a little bit to uh, catch on as it does a uh, calculation. Uh, like Kind of like, I guess, uh, PhD. But they, they already did the calculation, so it's already guiding. All right, let's take a look here. Let's go with uh, 60 second exposure. Look at that. Wow, I'm impressed. There's a three minute exposure. Let's zoom in on that one. And it looks really good. So far, so good. All right. Yeah, that looks nice and all that, but let's go over into here, the Sky Atlas framing. And that's what I have right there. Of course, it's rotated 90 degrees. But uh, I want to get this part of the nebula as well. So I'm going to move the image over. I'm going to use these coordinates right here. And this is what I'm going to use in Nina. Uh, but I want the CPWI to use this. Uh, and so it will track uh, automatically. It has to be done. It has to be um, uh, loaded into the CPWI here to get that done correctly. So let's go to target here. And it's going to move it ever so slightly. As you can see, the guiding stop once I start it uh, going to the target. And once it gets back on the target and centered, it will start tracking again. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because it's coming up to a meridian flip. And there is the tracking now. Uh, once it goes into the meridian flip, uh, if I have it all centered from CPWI, it will automatically turn the tracking back on after it does the flip. If I let Nina do the flip, uh, then it won't uh, track. So that, that's one of the things. I wish they would get the uh, ASCOM drivers for the uh, Star Sense Auto Guider uh, going uh, so that we'll be able to use it in Nina. Uh, so I don't have to worry about this. So I can go to bed and have it automatically flip and not worry about turning on the guiding. All right, let's take a look at a picture here. Let's go back into here. Let's just take it down to a quick 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, you see? Um, totally different. Uh, there, there's the nebula 
the witch's broom, I guess it's sometimes called. There's the other nebulosity over here. Uh, there's that bright star. I forgot the name of it. But anyway, uh, yeah. All right, let's do this. Let's, uh, let's start this off and um, let's see how it does well with the meridian flip. That's coming up. So let's start the sequence here. I got it all set up. Now, on the target options, I'm not going to center the target, not going to slew to the target. I'm going to start the guiding. And uh, the focus is fine, so I'm going to leave the autofocus alone for now. I'm not doing a meridian flip through Nina. I'm going to let CPWI do the meridian flip. So with that being said, let's stop the uh, recording over here. And let's go into the sequence over here and let's say go. All right, coming up to five minute exposure here and the temperature from plus 20 to a minus 10 on the sensor temperature. So let's see what happens here. There it is. Came out pretty good. And in Nina, I can rotate it. Well, let's go upside down. Let's let's make it look like a, a witch's broom. <laughs> look at that nebulosity there. Oh, is that nice? Another feature with the Star Sense Auto Guider, uh, they suggest that they, being Celestron, to add a, uh, a filter on top of the guide scope itself. So I have a, a UV IR cut filter. What they recommend. And actually, that helps the guiding a little bit better. So I did add this filter to the uh, StarSense Auto Guider, and it does work well. well I'll tell you one thing. I'm, I'm very impressed with the StarSense Auto Guider. I hope that Celestron will eventually add the ASCOM drivers to this system so that the StarSense Auto Guider will be incorporated into programs like NINA and uh, Sequence Generator Pro and Astrophotography Tools, just to name a few. Anyway. It works through the CPWI, uh, but it would work better if I had the ASCOM where I could do everything totally automatic, set the system up, and then let it do its thing throughout the nighttime hours. Anyway, I, I am really enjoying this upgrade to the Celestron 11-inch Edge uh, telescope rig. And the skies over the last several nights have been totally clear, so I was able to get these images finally. I had to wait for the sky to clear off before I could finish up uh, this information. Now, if you'd like to, if more information about the Star uh, Sense Auto Guider, uh, I have some videos made with that as well. And uh, there they are, right over there. No, right, right over there. There they are, up, up above my head. Uh, the, the videos for the Star Sense Auto Guider and the other accessories I added to this Celestron telescope. Anyway, you know, I hope the sky remains clear for you. And we got some clouds rolling in, which is normal now since we've had several nights of clear skies. And hopefully I'll have more clear skies uh, by this weekend coming up. Until then, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. <laughs>